When companies come out with new features and different tech, it's always really exciting to get hands on and play with it. But when companies like Apple come out with new tech, it always costs a small fortune to upgrade to the next big thing. What's going on guys? My name's David Tomic and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about the 2019 MacBook Pro's touch bar across the top. And yes, we are only talking about the little piece of OLED glass that replaces the function keys. For those of you who've been following my channel for a while now, you may have noticed that the audio quality wasn't that great before. Well, I listened to the comments that you guys put down in the videos and I went out and bought a little lapel mic. So I'm hoping that the audio quality in this video here is a little bit better and that we can keep growing this channel every single day. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you smash that subscribe button and let's get on with today's video. If you're watching this video here, it's more than likely that you're comparing the MacBook Pro with the touch bar and without the touch bar. Well, if you live in Australia right now, there's end of financial year sales on and you can get the MacBook Pro without the touch bar for about $1,900. If you want the version with the touch bar, it's $2,400. So it's $500 difference for just a little tiny touch bar across the top of the keyboard. Today, I wanna to find out with you guys, is it really worth it? And in my opinion, should you go out and spend that extra money for a tiny little piece of glass? So if you're unaware of what the touch bar is already, basically the touch bar is the little piece of glass at the top of the keyboard that replaces the original function keys that were there before. It continuously updates and changes with different little icons and symbols depending on what kind of program you're using or what software you're in. Now, one of the best features about the MacBook's touch bar is the Touch ID in the top right hand corner. If you've ever used a phone with a Touch ID fingerprint scanner, you know exactly what it does. But basically, it allows you to sign into your computer, sign into different apps, and also make transactions really quickly and really easily. When you finally signed into your MacBook with the Touch ID, you're going to notice three main icons along with Siri. One of the icons is brightness and the other two are volume. You're also going to notice a little triangle to the left of that which allows you to expand that whole touch bar across and give you more features. If you want to increase the volume, for example, you just tap the volume and drag it up and down, which is kind of a little cool and unique feature that's different to everybody else's laptop. Now, one thing I would recommend to you guys is changing the little Siri icon to potentially like something like the spotlight search. The spotlight search is going to get used a hell of a lot more than the Siri feature. So you can go into your settings and change it out to almost anything that you like. In my honest opinion, straight off the bat, only using it for a couple minutes, I thought, mm, you know what, this is kind of fun, but at the same time, it's kind of gimmicky. So I wanted to explore it a bit more and take it through a couple apps that were standard installs in the MacBook Pro. Obviously, I ran it through Chrome and a couple other programs, and again, it was quite fun. It allowed you to do shortcuts really quickly, which I guess is the whole point of the touch bar it really lets you speed up the process. One of the best things is that the fact that the touch bar has actually been out for about three years now. So all the software developers have had time to play catch up and introduce their own software updates to incorporate these little icons into the touch bar. So if you're doing movie editing, photo or anything, or anything like that, chances are there's a little scrub bar at the bottom that's gonna let you really move through the movies a lot quicker or move through your photos or your slides and things like that. Even though that touch bar looks really nice with its OLED display and its matte glass finish, it does, like I mentioned before, replace the function keys that were there previously. So if you're like me, who does use those function keys quite a bit to switch between apps and programs, it's kind of a bummer because it's not as easy to switch through programs as it was before. So that's basically all the touch bar really does. It's just there to give you different graphics and different logos to kind of get you more invited into the program, I guess, and to speed up the process sometimes. If you get used to it, it probably does help you speed up the process a lot more but personally, I haven't used it that much to be able to really tell you guys if it's worth it, if it's gonna speed up your workflow enough to justify the difference. But in my personal opinion, I don't think that an extra $500 for a touch bar that just gives you different graphics instead of learning keyboard shortcuts is worth the money. And that's my review of the MacBook Touch Bar. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that subscribe button, maybe drop a comment, let me know what you'd like to see next, and hopefully, I'll see you next Monday.